All right, let's take a look at setting up the payroll part of Project 5. Here, uh, generally, you're going to go into payroll setup and set that up, and the educational version of Sage or Peachtree is going to use some fake numbers that are built into there. And then you just would need to set up the employees and pay the employees. However, in this particular case, um, they have not put in uh, the update of even the fake numbers. So we would have to manually put in formulas uh, to be able to, uh, to have our setup in there. This project is not worth that kind of time to be put in to just to do the payroll. So I'm going to show you how to do the payroll without having um, any numbers already in there. We are still going to go ahead into payroll setup and payroll settings. Click next. Now this is asking you as if you had a real payroll and uh, obviously we're not doing any of that with the educational version. So you hit next. Here it's going to ask for the state unemployment rate. Now this is the one thing it will go ahead and calculate uh, for you. So you can go ahead and put that 3.1% that you were told was the pseudo rate. Um, and you can go ahead and put that in there and say next. Okay, um, here you can put in the account numbers. If I click next to regular under GL account number, I can find what account number is going to go on there. So I want uh, for the regular hourly wages. I want that to go to wages expense. Okay. And uh, overtime would be the same. And for salaries would be the same. Now we do have some people, some employees who are going to go under wages expense dash office as opposed to wages expense dash store. So we'll need to change those individual employees. But these just this just sets up the default. Now they're talking about benefits. We don't have any benefits we need to worry about. So we can just click on through here. Okay and uh, we're not going to worry about this either. Okay, you can also go to set up employee defaults. Your, if you don't already have it there, your GL account for these various taxes uh, should be payroll taxes payable, liability account. It should start with a 2. So if you don't already have that in there, you can make sure that that's added in there. Company fields. This is for the employer costs. You're going to have the payroll taxes payable account over here under liability, and you're going to have the expense account, it's payroll tax expense, uh, here, number 612. Okay, and you can say okay. All right, then we're going to set up the employees. Uh, now, I have mine set up, so I'm going to go under view and edit employees, but you would go under new employees. And so here's Maggie Roll. So you go ahead and have some kind of employee ID. You can make up whatever ID you want. And then you put in the person's name. Okay. And then we're going to go to the Pay Info tab. 
and here you're going to make sure that for all three employees it says salary and bi-weekly. Okay, and then now Maggie's salary is $1,100 for the bi-weekly period. So I'm going to put that in there and notice that it's already on 611, which is uh, wages expense dash store, which is correct for Maggie. So I'm going to leave it there. If I needed to correct this, then I have to go here to use defaults and unclick that. And then I can click in where the 611 is and I can go down to uh, office wages expense, if that's what Maggie was. But I can go ahead and just click on use default and it'll bring back the 611. Okay? Uh, you want to go to withholding information and, Ma and Maggie is single with one allowance, so you want to put those in there. Okay, and uh, that's all we need on that one. And you want to go to employee fields and uh, make sure that that all says 213 payroll tax payable. And the company should be uh, uh, payroll tax payable for the liability and payroll tax expense for the expense. And uh, then Maggie is set up and ready. Okay. Now in the past where it was calculating out things, uh, you could go ahead and under the general tab there's an employee beginning balances and you could put in July 31st and then uh, put in um, the gross wages and the information that I had given you for the beginning balances for that employee. And then that way the computer would check and see if you've gone over the maximum for FUDA, etc. In this case, you don't really need to do that at the moment uh, because it's not calculating the taxes anyways. So our next thing is to go down and pay the employees. So you're going to go into pay employees, enter payroll for one employees. And it's going to tell you that your tax calculations are out of date. And you're going to bring up the employee, Maggie. Okay. And again, it's going to tell you about how all of this stuff is out of date. You need to add manual formulas and all of that. Just say okay to all. Okay. Uh, you want to put the check number in, uh, whatever the check number was that's listed in your narrative, and the date, I believe, was the 12th. And again, you get this box, say okay to all. Okay. It automatically assumes that your salary is $1,100. If you need to change that, then you can oh, um, click on it and change it. Okay. Notice over to the right, here's my taxes section, and it's all zeros because it's not calculating anything. So you have to go in there and calculate it. So federal income tax, we're going to use 8%. So I'm going to take $1,100. And multiply it times 0 0.08. And that is $88. Okay. Now, because I'm going to want this subtracted from their gross wages, I actually have to put a minus sign first. Minus 88. Enter. Okay. Now, Social Security is 6.2% times the gross wages. So here I'm going to take 1100 times 0 .062, and that's $68.20. I put my minus 68.20, enter. Medicare is 1.45% of the gross wages. So I'm going to take 1100 times 0 .0145, and that's $15.95. Okay. 
and so I'm going to put a minus 15.95. Okay, the state income tax, we're not going to worry about that. Um, now, we get down to the Social Security C and Medicare C. This is where the employer costs are being calculated. And again, they're not being calculated. The employer has to match the FICA, which is Social Security and Medicare, and the employer has to pay unemployment taxes, which is FUTA and SUTA. So we're going to match the Social Security and the Medicare that the employee already had taken out. So the employee had taken out 6820 for Social Security. So under Social Security C, I'm going to put the 6820 again, only without the subtraction sign. If you put the subtraction sign, it means it's going to subtract it from the gross wages. And this is the employer part, so it's not subtracted. So we're just going to put 6820. Enter. Here's Medicare C. So I'm going to match the Medicare that I already calculated. That was 1595. So I'm going to put 1595. Oops. Without the subtraction. Okay, notice that we do not match the federal income tax, just the Social Security and Medicare. Now I have the federal unemployment, which is FUDA, and FUDA is 0.6%, so that's 0.006, is as long as the employee has not gone over the $7,000 maximum. Now in this case, Maggie had $9,000 worth of gross wages so far from January 1st to July 31st before this check. So um, Maggie has already gone past the maximum. So there is, with the uh, employer doesn't have to pay any food on Maggie. So we're going to leave that as zero. Now when you get to yourself, as the employee, you just started. So you don't have any beginning cumulative wages. So you haven't passed the maximum. So now we would need to calculate it. So you would take the gross wages times 0 .006. And you would put it under where it says federal unemployment with no subtraction sign. Here's the state unemployment, SUDA. Um, and SUDA for the state of South Carolina, the maximum is $12,000. So Maggie is underneath the SUDA maximum, so they already did calculate the 3.1% times 1,100 uh, gross wages and came up with 3410. So that is the one number that they are calculating and it's already in there. Okay, so once we got all that, notice that as we put those first numbers in with the minus signs, it was automatically subtracting it. So now this check is made out for $927.85 instead of $1,100 because it took those deductions that have the subtraction sign out of there. Okay, I want to make sure that my pay period ends also says August 12th, as well as this date up here. You want to make sure that the cash account is your uh, checking account. Okay, you can click on the journal button. You can see that I'm going to debit wages expense for $1,100. I'm going to credit payroll taxes payable for these various uh, tax deductions. Then you have this gray area here which is showing the credits that are going to go to payroll taxes payable for the employer portion. And then we have a debit to payroll taxes expense for the employer costs. And finally, we have a credit to cash for the net pay of $927.85. So here they joined the two. Every time you do payroll, you have two journal entries. One for the employee part, which is the check showing the gross wages to wages expense, credit the taxes to payroll tax payable, and credit uh, cash for the net pay. Then you have the second journal entry, which includes a debit to payroll tax expense and a credit to payroll tax payable 
for the total of the employer costs. And so here they've joined both of those journal entries together into this one giant journal entry. And you can say, okay. So you would go through each of the employees just that way. 8% for the federal income tax, just to use 8%. In, re in real life, we would have to use our circular E tax tables. Um, you're going to put in Social Security, 6.2%, Medicare, 1.45%. All of those are going to go with a minus. Then you're going to go down to Social Security and Medicare C, put in those two same numbers that you had for Social Security and Medicare, except without the minus. If the person's beginning cumulative wages, which is on page one of your narrative, uh, is over $7,000, then you're going to put a zero here for the FUDA. If it's under, under $7,000, then you're going to take their gross wages times .006, and put that number there without a minus. Your state unemployment should be correctly calculated, so you should be able to leave that B. 